of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And before we pray, remember we make a vow to God. Come touch yourself and call your name. For Malaika shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Don't let no storm blow you. Praise God. Don't let no storm. We don't know what the end of 2020 is going to come with. We don't know. But don't let nothing move you from out the house of the Lord. Praise God. And we're going to pray this morning. Just stretch your hand across to somebody. We're going to be our brother, keeper this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just stretch your hands. And we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your love and your grace. Lord, we just want to thank you for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, we want to thank you for your tender mercy. God, we want to thank you this morning, God, and at Mighty God, the second of the beginning of this year, Lord, we can in your house. God, we just want to thank you for providing a place where we can worship one more time, Lord. God, we want to thank you for each and every one of us, Lord. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, God. Mighty God, Lord Jesus, oh, God for hoping up in doors for us Lord even when we it seems like oh God doors are be closing Lord you still oh God been faithful unto us Lord God we want to thank you for the musician the praise team 
Oh God, our leader, God, we put, oh God, the leader of the house, Bishop Garfield Daly. Oh God, in your hand and his wife and his children and his family. Oh God, our deacons, our ministers, our hushers. Oh God, our musician, oh God, our media team, Lord, our saints, our hushes, God, each and every one. Oh God, we thank you this morning, God. Oh God, for continue to be faithful unto us. God, we just want to thank you for the word that come forth. You know who will bring forth the word, the starter. Oh God, the moderator. God, we pray for those who are at home watching. God, we pray for those, God, that are wondering. God, in their mind, what if they should come back, oh God, to the house of God? What if they should give up, mighty God? God, we pray for the hands saved this morning. God, we pray for the backsliders. God, we pray, oh God, for the ones that want, oh God, to come and give their life to you, Lord. But for whatever reason, Lord God, the enemy, oh God, put in fear on them. We say break every chain this morning. God, we pray if there is any sick among us, any prayer request, oh God, that never come forth. You know every needs this morning. God, you know who come forth with a needs. Oh God, those who need healing in the body. In the name of Jesus this morning, we ask that your healing virtue will touch. Mighty God, remember those among us, God, who are feeling sad for whatever reason. God, lift their spirit this morning. Put a praise on every seat this morning, great God. Oh God, anoint the hall to hear you. We pray, God, for our visitor that will be coming this morning. Oh God, we pray for those who are in need of the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. God, we bind up every principalities and every forces of the enemy. God, we say take full control of this place this morning to the four corner. God, from the driveway to this upstairs, Lord. Oh God, let your blood apply this morning, God. And as they enter through the gate, hallelujah, they will feel your Shekinah glory. Mighty God, we pray, oh God, for those who will hear by the sounding of our voice, oh God, by the internet. God, we pray, oh God, when there is offering time, God, we pray that we will be a cheerful giver, Lord Jesus. We pray that somebody will be blessing us, blessing the offering this morning, Lord, by giving what God lay on their heart. God, we pray if there is anyone here this morning who are in need of food. Mighty God, they may cannot pay their rent. Oh God, their, their, their mortgage, their car loan. God, that you will make a way. Show us that individual, God, that whatever small it is, we can bless them with Lord Jesus. God, help us to continue to be our brother and sister keepers. Help us to continue to fellowship in love and in unity. Mighty God, help us to continue to be on one accord. Because when we be in one accord, Lord, great things can happen, Lord. If there is anything we fail to ask this morning, fail not to grant it, Lord. As I tell you, Lord, that we love and appreciate you and we adore you this morning. Thank you for all that you have done and what you're about to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, can we just lift our hands and say, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Can you turn your hymn all this morning to 141? Hallelujah. When they ring the golden bells. beyond the river that we call the sweet forever and we only reach the shore by faith degree one by one we get the portal
Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise God. I'm going to be asking you to be seated. To be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I want to ask us a question while we are seated. Who here this morning dress for their funeral? Anybody hear me? Who inside here this morning dress for your funeral? As a child of God, every day that we wake, we must dress for our funeral. We are to dress to be buried. Because the Bible tells us that we ought to die daily. And if we die daily, we should dress for burial. I see you're not getting what I'm saying. I see you're not getting what I'm saying. You're not getting what I'm saying. Every day you should be raptured ready. Every day you should be rapture ready as a saints of the most high God. So I'm telling you on the first Sunday of 2022, from today, every day you get up and you put your clothes on, dress for your funeral. Dress the way you want to be buried. And I'm not talking about your literal clothes. I'm talking about your life. Dress the way you want to be buried. Do you want to be buried as a saint? Or you want to be buried as a devil? We ought to dress that way. Can we praise the Lord? Anybody here who is ready for death, can you stand? Anybody here that is ready for death, can you stand? If you are ready to die, stand. Let me ask another way. Anybody here that is ready for heaven, stand. So how are you going to go to heaven if you don't die? For this mortal shall do what? Put on what? Immortality! Can you lift your hands and praise God? Sing that song for me. My wrath just so shall find no rest beyond the river in the cross in the Oh, I should be my 
is an awesome God. We truly want to thank God for what he has been doing within our lives. For these past two years with the pandemic, he has been keeping us. He has been keeping us. And we want to let God know, Lord, help me to be rapture ready. Help me to dress for my funeral. Help me to be ready to reign with you. The things I have done when I was blind, you may have the evidence. But since God has opened my eyes, you have not seen my eulogy. God did not show that to you. He kept it for himself. So can we lift our hands and tell him thanks. Praise God. He's an awesome God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated one more time. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? I, I, I am having an, an exciting feeling in me, but I don't know how to let it out. But it's a feeling that I want to ask God to help me to be ready for death. I don't know if you have ever had that experience. I just want to ask God to help me to be ready for death. He's awesome. Can, can we stand? It's all over me and he's keeping me alive. He's all over me and he's keeping me alive. But I want to be ready for death. Singers. He's all over me and, and he's keeping me alive. Oh, keeping me alive. Keep it. 
clap your hands unto him. I've got salvation in time. I've got mine, brother. I've got mine. I have got the Holy Ghost. Surely keep me fine. The devil throw his net at me, but never reach it. Yes, I've got mine. I've got mine. I've got mine. I've got mine. I have got the Holy Ghost. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? Can we clap our hands unto Him? If you're going to heaven, clap your hands. If you're going to heaven, clap your hands. You know. Some man, him look at him life and him start to match it up with the word and him realize something wrong. And I heard the man said, I look down the road and I wonder, oh Jesus, said I wonder, oh yes, I wonder. Said I look down the road and I wonder how far I was. So then me buckle on me shoes, shoes in loose man, and I said, Who would ever have a right? Then I buckle on my shoes. The person stop and you still a walk and attack. But when you look at them, I swear God sometimes with me and Jesus, you know. Because Jesus I said, hold on, little man. No go up there so yet. But because you don't see nothing, just start push on. But Jesus says, stop. But when you find that happen, wait for Jesus. Turn back and meet him. Because when you're walking with God, you can rejoice. God's ways is not necessarily match up with my dream and my vision. But God's way for my life is always the right way. All of us inside here have plans. We make ourselves better off financially and physically than how we are. Me heat a lot, but me never plan for gain weight. <laughs> me 
heat all kind of something but me never know more I get sugar Amen. but Jesus said no and him that try to tell me but love too much big chicken leg man no matter what time we get to home, we have to heat the rice and peas because it looks pretty. My ways are not always the way that God wants, but God's way is always the right way. Wave your hand to somebody and tell them, say, God is good. Despite of my situation, God is good. Despite of all the things that I desire, and God don't give it to me. I'm still good. God know your measurement to keep you. Every one of us inside here have a price. Just sit down for a minute. Bishop getting ready to come greet. Every one of us have a price. But God can't allow some of us price to come in front of us. You disbelieve it? Balak did send man to Balaam you know, and tell him to come curse Israel. And him talk to God and God tell him, say, send with the man. And him send them away. But the Bible says, Balak send more influential man. Eh? The first one where him said, never have your price. The second one come with Balaam price. But God's word still stand. But him come with Balaam price. Ask God, say, Lord, don't send my price. Let me continue to see you for who you are. That I may glory in your presence. Bishop, come greet this church. Come greet this congregation. Let's greet them. And later on you give them the charge. Praise God. Amen. Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, everybody in the house. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and give him a 2022 clap offering of praise. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't God good? Praise God. I know they can say everybody has a price and he's right. But at the same time, you know, when we get saved, it's a different thing, you know. Because when our minds are made up, I can tell you it don't matter what is presented to us. One writer says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, money, anything, shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for that, child. Look, there is a price, but when you are in God and you make up your mind, no amount of money, no amount of anything ought to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That means God is such a great, big, powerful, close, loving individual. I want you to put your hands together and magnify this great God. That when you're in right relationship with him, nothing. Anybody here could do well with 110 million US? 120 million US? That could have helped anybody here? You can imagine if Bill said, take this hundred million US. But I know you love Jesus, but don't bother call him name again. But go to church, but don't bother with the Jesus, Jesus thing. You know, some people, believe it or not, take the hundred million US and go to church, you know. But them not going to say Jesus, Jesus. But you're going to see them raise them and in church. 
but them heart not there because they get what they wanted and more and some folks would hold on to the thing and come into church and have on their suits and their dress and their hats with the hundred million with their hand up in the air but they are not right with God but me keep your money for you I know many of us go and say keep your money keep your money I, it, it is Jesus and him alone all the way anybody here want to just stand up right now and declare that Jesus all the way for 2022 Jesus all the way for 2022 those of us that have joined via the world wide web it is Jesus all the way Ten million, and we speak in U.S. dollars now. Twenty million, one hundred million, one billion is not enough to let me deny my Jesus. You better come. You have to come better than that. Come with about a fifty billion U.S. and make we start talk. And if you start talk there, you have to come better than that. And if you take the the GDP of the United States of America, which is like some 52 trillion US dollars. We can't sit down, but you have to come better than that. No amount of money, saints of God, can I tell you, it not worth it, not even for one moment outside of the presence of God. And then you come back in, it not worth it. Stay in the presence of God. Walk with the king. Love the Lord with all of your heart. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And know that the Lord, he is God. We will find that with a billion dollars and no Jesus, we don't have no joy. Money cannot do it. But let me tell you, oh, the love of God. So rich and pure. So measureless and strong I charge the people of God love your king love the Lord with all of your heart give him everything that you have got don't make nobody wave money in front of your eyes it not going to help you if you don't have Jesus you're going to get it and die you're going to get it and throw up it not going to help you but little is much God is in it. And I hear the writer move on and say, labor not for wealth or fame. Sister June, there is a crown. Singers, you can wear it. Saints of the Most High God, we can wear it if we go in Jesus' name. Boy, I wish I could sing. The song says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I greet the household of faith. I greet everyone. You may be seated. I greet every one of you here in the sanctuary, those that have joined us via the world wide web. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am happy. I am delighted to be in the house of the Lord this first Sunday. Amen. In January first Sunday in 2022 look what the Lord has done in 2020 when we heard up the, the, the news about the pandemic I know there are many saints that wondered if they were going to make it out of 2020 and then 2021 came and we thought if we we it's impossible for this thing to continue to the end of the year and it reached the end of the year and we are now into 2022 elder it is still here with us but guess what we are still in the house of God we are still in the presence of the king and although we can't understand it what we understand is that whatever is happening we ought to give praise to the most high God can I tell the people of God listen to me all kind of things come on earth to threaten and to 
try to destroy but i am convinced that nothing can stop the church of the living god i am convinced that nothing can stop you and i charge us don't let anything stop you on your way to every saint god bless you i greet you amen the first greeting in 2022 well on a sunday because you got greeting saturday morning or no you never get greeting saturday you got greeting friday night so this is the first greeting in 2022 and i say god bless every one of you we pronounce a blessing i pronounce a blessing upon this house upon this family of faith chapel and the faith apostolic ministry the blessing of the lord be upon you whether you're here in its tabernacle whether you are uh, at home across jamaica wherever you reside whether you're a part of the diaspora we greet you in the precious precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ let's continue to worship the lord in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness to the visitors that are with us are there any visitors in the house this morning anybody here visiting with us amen i want you could we just ask you to stand we just want to see you just stand up make we take a a a, a, a view of you god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you amen 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 we appreciate all the visitors we thank you for amen coming out and making it amen into faith chapel this morning amen uh, i am not sure how you heard about us but it really doesn't matter you are here and we say god richly bless every one of you those visitors that have joined us online the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you now can i say just before i take my seat 2022 started like 2021 just like 2020 just like 2019 a typical year a normal year but elder Bailey, i feel that something is special about 2022 brother b something is special about this year i feel that we are going to see God at work in a way. I just feel that way. This is not God telling me that. I'm telling you how I feel. It, it didn't just crap up on me that way though. But I just feel because of some other things that God had indicated to me. I feel this is going to be a year of tremendous breakthrough. I feel that it is going to be a year of tremendous victory not only for the church corporate but victory in the lives of individuals and and i'm not talking about i feel that you're going to get wealthy because you know we're not into this prosperity gospel thing like a whole heap of folks say, this is your year for the financial breakthrough oh many folks have said that and they might even come and say it to you and it don't come yet so don't don't get sidetracked when we talk about a breakthrough for you because money is so important there, but there is so much more that is important to you than that and i feel that that thing is going to come into your life in 2022 and in this year of omicron which spread seven times faster than the other variants in this year you are going to see god at work in your life like never before you are going to see god at work in this church like never before and it might puzzle our minds don't be puzzled is there anybody in the house that feel that they can lift their feet high like this roof in 2022 we're calling upon you to lift your feet for everything that we're gonna need in this church in 2022 do you believe it can i ask you to lift your feet way up there and keep it up there in this year from this morning lift your feet 
nothing is impossible oh hallelujah nothing is impossible with our God and if we know him we can hold his hand and shout it and I don't care what under the sun the challenge will be we can scale it in Jesus name and I want us to lift our face come on we put our hands together and give the Lord a clap offering of praise so God bless you in the name of the Lord let's continue to hold on to him let's continue to believe him let's continue to trust him and watch and see what our God will do in 2022 God bless you in Jesus name praise the Lord Jesus praise the Lord could the hushers could the hushers come please um, praise the Emil minister as the offering has been collected can the hushers come please Praise God. Praise God. As they come, let's pray. Heaven, the Father, Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for your great love and your mercies. We thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for your favor. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. You have blessed us with so much, Lord Jesus, God, that even though circumstances are hard you still make a way for us lord god as we give back of our finances as you give to us we pray lord jesus god that it, you will use it to bring bread into your house so that there may be meat in your house bless lord jesus god and sanctify it for your purpose and for your glory in jesus name we pray amen praise god praise god praise team um, you will be seeing the account information running across your screen you can just go to your phone or to your laptop and just make your deposit God bless you in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah oh, oh today the sun is shining but I see dark clouds ahead
nobody else could ever love me like you do. I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you. I'm depending on the Lord to see me through. I'm depending on you, Lord, to see me through. Depending on you, Lord, to see me through. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Can we lift our hands and give the great God a wonderful praise? We thank you, great God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Praise God. And it's come time for us to hear a word from God through his servant and as we stand I'm going to be asking the under shepherd of this house the man who God has laid a mantle upon to lead his people in this time in this season the man who is accounted unto God for our lives because he placed it in his hands to lead us so that we can follow Christ as he follow Christ and so we are going to be asking our bishop to all of us he's our bishop and pastor to one woman here is her husband. To three children in this assembly is their father, their biological father. But to many, he is also a father. And to some of us who see him as more than just a bishop, but also as a brother and a friend, we want to thank God for him. And we want to introduce our bishop to come at this time. And we're going to be asking his wife who is here, who is the only woman that can state claims to all his good ways and bad ways and his weaknesses and his fault, to come right now, Sister Daly, and to escort him to the pulpit. As you are the one who made him come out and looking sharp, make, make sure that his clothes is properly hired, properly put together. Because like enough of us men, we don't know fashion. We just know how to wear clothes. But we thank God for lovely wife who can stand beside us and let us look good. And let us feel proud that when we go out, I look at Brother Gail this morning, I know he didn't dress himself, but we give God thanks. And so we introduce right now, Bishop and Sister Daly, in Jesus' name. I don't know if he's gonna use it to preach this, but the both of you can come, in Jesus' name. So the church and everybody can now know you in person. Praise God. Can we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, constant God, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 has not changed you. Your attributes remain the same, ever faithful, ever loving, ever true holy there is no flaw in you mighty God there is no secret that you do not know omniscient one this morning we give you thanks we express our appreciation to you 
most holy God. Lord, as your servant stands before the congregation of your people, media land, those that will catch up later on live stream, Lord, we pray that you will anoint his lips. We pray, mighty God, that every word that comes from his mouth is coming from you. Lord, we believe you have given him a word, and we thank you. But even now as he stands and about to say what says the Lord, we want you to navigate him. We want you to navigate his lips. We want you to be the anointing that expresses your will to your people, to your man today, mighty God. Sanctify him. Hold him, O oh God, in the hall of your hands. Lord, and we pray for your people and about to hear what you say today. Open our hearts. Open our spirits that we will receive your word with grace and with gladness. Join us together, mighty God, not just physically here, but in spirit. Oh God, touch every last one of us little ones, leave no stone unturned today. We thank you. We bless your name. And we sit here ready to hear and follow your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And can we praise the Lord, everybody? Thank you, Sister Daly. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Amen, amen, amen. And Deacon is very right, because I had my gold tie on this morning, and I had to take it off and put on a black and white tie, which I think I wore the other day. But, and, and uh, you know, but that's how it is. I'm happy for that. Well, you're, you're happy for that. Brother Gail, you're happy for that. Uh, amen. We, we, we quite understand. But God is a good God. Anybody can testify and agree with that? God is good. God is absolutely awesome. Let, let us join in this chorus before we are seated. It's a simple chorus. It says, the great physician now is here the sympathizing Jesus anybody believe that the great physician is in the house right now anybody need a touch from the hands of the healer himself anybody need a touch to soothe something in your life to to lift you up to set you on the right path so that you can feel connected with God anybody need a physician in the house do you believe that there is a physician in the house right now do you believe that there is a healer in the house right now if you could just lift your hands and glorify the great healer the great physician the great savior oh he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah and so the song says the great physician go ahead singers Praise God. The great physician now is here. The same
is not a great the Lord somebody hallelujah what a great God what a great Savior what a great healer what a great deliverer glory can still do it you are still doing it we bless your great name hallelujah hallelujah no other healer no other deliverer hallelujah no other keeper hallelujah 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 no other but Jesus Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Sweetest notes. Sweetest notes. Sweetest name. Sweet Jesus. I want to read from the book of Jeremiah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I feel him in the house right now. Oh, what a healing Jesus. He is today. Oh, hallelujah. What a healing Jesus. My God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Whatever your situation, whatever the ache in your heart, whatever the pain in your soul, hallelujah he's in the house right now and when i say he's in the house i mean he's in a place to stretch over and minister hallelujah as only he alone can i don't know what is happening to you uh, but i know that the healing jesus is here i know that he's here i know that he's here glory to god glory to god glory to god and I'm reading from the prophet J. 
Jeremiah. Amen. Reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 8. So that is Jeremiah, chapter number 8. And I take it at verse 22. Praise God. And it reads thus. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? If there was a balm in Gilead, and if a real physician was there, the health of the daughter of his people would have recovered, but they were still sick. And the question was asked by none other than the Almighty. Is there not a balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? A simple word to us this morning. There is a balm for you. There is a balm for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If the Lord has been good to you, won't you just put your hands together and give him a clap offering of praise another time. Great God he is, great Savior he is, altogether lovely, none like him, none before him, none beside him. None will ever be like him, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. He knows everything. He is all wise. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what he is doing. He needs none of us to instruct him, to advise him. He needs none of us to give him uh, or to tell him how to proceed with doing his work. He knows all things and he does all things well because there was none that could give him advice he counseled with himself he advised himself if he was to swear he had to swear by himself because there was none greater than him to swear by so that the god that we are serving the god that we are dealing with he knows what he is about saints of the most high god he knows everything about everything there is nothing that we have here that came by itself Everything that we see and that we touch came out of something that came as a result of the word spoken by Almighty God. He takes nothing and makes it something. He takes emptiness and makes it become something. That's the God that you and I, I have to deal with, that we serve. And so there is nothing that our God cannot do. Do you believe that? There is nothing that is around that our God is not able to attend, to, to address, to fix, and to set aside for himself. He is just absolutely awesome. And can we praise the Lord? He is absolutely awesome. There is, there is no one that can be compared. He is the incomparable God. Take the royalty of Hail Selassie and how regal other that presented themselves as messiahs or gods were. And when you put their most glorious moment beside the God that we serve, it fades into insignificance and nothingness. His glory is beyond and above every 
thing else. There is nothing, no one, no God that can be compared to the God that you and I serve. We ought to be happy that we know him. We ought to be happy and always rejoicing that it is he with whom we deal and not another. I am happy. I am proud. I am delighted. I sometimes get bossy about the God that I serve because, you know, I said, boy, me lucky because I could have been serving some other God except this one. But I thank God it's not luck. It is just that the great God of heaven chose me. And the great God of heaven called you. We ought to take this thing seriously, saints of the most high God. And give this God the glory that is due to his great name. Give this God the glory and the honor that is due to him. He ought not to be second place. He ought not to play second fiddle. He is the number one. And we must treat him like the number one. Somebody praise the Lord. We must give him his time when it is his time. We must give him his place when it is his place. And give him what is due to him every time that we get the chance. Can we praise the Lord? Don't relegate him to the back room. Don't relegate him to the back of the car or the trunk of your car. Keep him in the front seat. Remember who he is. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Can we praise the Lord somebody? Can we praise the Lord somebody? Can we praise the Lord another time? He is worthy to be praised. The, the prophet Jeremiah, and we read from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah lived in an era where there was a great transition that was taking place in the Middle East. Amen. The Assyrian Empire, which was the great power of the day with its headquarters in Nineveh, was now on the decline. They used to reign supreme. That great Assyrian army, when they came across the border, countries would tremble in fear at what they knew would be their certain demise. But there was a transition taking place in the Near East at that time. And Assyria, with its mighty and well-known capital, Nineveh, they were now on the decline. Their power was waning. They were going from a place of lofty heights and they were dwindling. The power was moving from beneath their feet and a new superpower was now emerging. The Babylonish power was now on the ascendancy, stepping up and taking over from the Assyrians so that there was a transition taking place. And the people of the world round about was looking on and in bewilderment and great amazement, they were seeing the crumbling of an empire and the rising of a new one. Everybody knew about Sennacherib and all the other kings of Assyria. But all of a sudden, there came Babylon. And we know one of its most noble kings, Nebuchadnezzar. They were now rising and the people around was looking at everybody, wondering what was going to happen. This was unheard of. How could Assyria fall? And so there was a period of transition. And it was causing anxiety to the people of the world. Even there in Judah, the people were wondering what on earth was happening because things were happening on the international scene but it was affecting them they were troubled and they were perplexed because of the uncertainty that came with the change with the shift with the transition and so it was in this atmosphere of change and transition and shifting that jeremiah the prophet emerged and came up in the land of Judah and started to prophesy and to preach to the people because he saw that while the movements were taking place and everybody was afraid and wondering what was going to happen 
people in times of uncertainties would normally tend especially those that know god to want to draw back from what they were doing and to focus or refocus on the god that they knew when there are, are fearful things happening when the times are uncertain when criminality is getting out of hand and everything seems to be waning from what it used to be when the the economic situation gets crazy and things are just out of control what normally happens is that people gravitate to the god that they knew and so here were the things happening right across the world at that time in the then world and a major shift was taken place in the international scene and it was troubling the people of judah but then jeremiah got up and jeremiah recognized what was happening and he saw that the people's heart were far from god he used and he seized the moment with the transition and with all that was happening jeremiah got over to the people and he preached and he prophesied the word of the lord to them and said listen to me people i want you to understand that you must turn now look at what is happening around now is the time to turn from serving god in a half-hearted way and give him your total heart now is the time to do right now is the time to live right now is the time to put God at the place where he is supposed to be at the forefront of everything that you do put aside your idols and I want the church to know this morning that idols is not just instruments and figures that we put up on a counter and bow before him an idol is not merely a piece of wood or a piece of stone that a man might put on a pedestal and say you are my god in those days men did that because of different reasons but an idol is anything that we put in front and above serving and living for the living god you can have idols of television you can have idols of people you can have idols and sometimes your money can become your idol and jeremiah said to the people there put away the idol it is time to serve god with a true heart look at what is happening everywhere around us don't you see something is happening in the atmosphere but then no matter how jeremiah preached and prophesied guess what happened the people nevertheless uh, still continued we might think and this is important for us to know because sometimes folks are worried and they say when i see certain things happening it tells me that jesus is near to come but did you know that we can see the signs in front of us uh, and we are moved for a moment uh, and next week uh, we are back to where we were we forget about the signs we forget about the things that we see around us and we fall right back into the same people that we were the week before and the month before it is possible and this is why it is important that we don't want just to look around at what is happening because things tend to simmer down after a while and if we are watching what is happening when it simmer down we are going to go back to the kind of people that we were i remember one time when the rich man reached down into hell uh, in the new testament gospels and he saw how wicked it was he didn't even want his brothers uh, to come down here so he was telling father abraham to send somebody from the dead to go let them know that so this thing is real but you know what the word was that came said listen to me if a preacher tell them and them don't take the word of the preacher all if a dead man come alive and tell them them still not gonna believe it i want us to understand the hearts of men that we must be very careful that we are not looking for signs and simply looking at things because when things simmer down we become the same people that we were but it is important that we seize the moment and if we understand that this is happening having seen it forget about that and just turn to serving the living god and so jeremiah preached to the people and he prophesied to them and he said serve god because if you don't 
judgment is sure. And he told them over and over. The Bible said that Jeremiah, having spoken the word, he reverted to writing it and he got his scribe baruch and said write this word and put it in a scroll and give it to the people he was no desperate because they were not taking the word he was no desperate he was called the weeping prophet they were not receiving the word and he said write it in the scroll and give it to the people and they read it and they put it aside and the king jehoiakim got a copy of the prophecies of Jeremiah and he read it and when he saw that it says serve God or else the judgment is going to come serve God or else the Babylonians are going to come take you captive serve God or else you are not going to make it you know what the king did he took the word and he cut it into pieces and he burnt it Yes, he did. So God recognized that the heart of the people was hard. Not that he didn't know, but it came to the fore. The heart of the people was so hard. And so, with all the unthinkable happening, things happening, the political landscape changed the military might of the assyrians went down the economic landscape right across the then near east was in jitters and yet the people rejected the word of almighty god to the point where god spoke through the prophet And had a word for the people. God was now at the point where he was going to rain down judgment upon Judah. God was now at the point where they were going to feel his hand. Because no matter how he presented the word to them, no matter how he came simple, or no matter how it came with fire, the folks listened and they continued in their way. The majority of them. And God was going to rain down his judgment upon them. But God recognized something else. He recognized that they were sick. The reason why men know that God is real and is to be served and they still turn away from him and turn away from the fountain of living waters and go to cisterns that are dried it is only a mad person, a person that is sick mentally. We'll see a fountain over here and walk past the fountain, mark the sign of a mad person and go over to an empty cistern and looking around and turning on the tap for water and a fountain is flowing right there. If you see that, you will recognize that that has to be someone of unsound mind. That person has an illness. That person is sick. And God, at, in another scripture, spoke that there is a problem with my people. For they have left me the fountain of living waters. And have hewn them out cisterns that have no water. And they are in there digging and digging and digging for water to spring up. And the well is right next door to them. They are ill. They are sick. They need help. And God saw that that was the condition of Judah at the time. And although he was going to pronounce judgment upon them, he saw that they were sick. And so God said, listen to me now. Is there no physician? 
Is there no balm in Gilead? I want us to understand that God knew what was happening and God knew the hardness of their heart. And there is something about God that it is important that we understand. He asked if there was no balm in Gilead. Now, most of us might not know, but Gilead was a particular region in Judah beyond the river where the tribes of God and Manasseh dwelt. That place was known for a certain type of tree that grew there. And the fruit from that tree produced a substance that was used to make an ointment. The ointment had a particular aroma. You know, like how we talk about eucalyptus oil or, or, or menthol crystal with that smell. It had that aroma. And then when they made that cream, that ointment, they would take that cream. And if you had arthritis, they rub it in the area that hurt. And guess what? It just caused the pain to go away. There was something about the balm that came from the trees in Gilead. So that those that were in the arena of medicine they all head down to gilead because they wanted to get some of that balm because it sued pain it caused it aches to go away the smell of it clears the respiratory tract and if a sick man wanted to bypass everything and to bypass god and he just made his way down to gilead so gilead was the place of healing Gilead was the place where the great physicians were. But guess what? God is a funny God, you know. Because God will mock you when your calamities come sometimes. When we keep turning our backs on him, you know. So God now looked over and said, listen, my people are sick. And I came across to you. And you would not entertain me. But you seem to feel that you can get your help from over there or over there or over there. But I want somebody to know if you're going to get healing for your soul, you've got to come to the fountain of living water. And that is Jesus Christ himself. I want the church to know today that if you're going to get healing for whatever your situation, not just your physical, but more so the spiritual, we have got to know that there is a real balm, a spiritual balm, and it is in Jesus Christ our Lord. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being, in him is deliverance, in him you and I will be set free. Oh, can we praise the Lord? But back there, instead of looking to God, especially in the time of their calamity, they continued in their sin. And if they wanted a touch in their body, they would find themselves over to Gilead. So God turned his attention to Gilead now and said, listen to me, my people are sick. My daughters over here are sick. The people need help. And they have gone over to Gilead and they come back and they are still sick. So God now asks the hypothetical question, is there no balm in Gilead? You see, you're sick. And so you're gone over there and you come back six same way. Is there no bomb? Want you to understand that God was mocking them, you know. And God was hypothetically asking the question through the prophet, is there no bomb? Palm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? In other words, God was saying, you feel that you can go get help outside of me. Go on over there and tell me if help come. But I want to tell you, if it is not Jesus, you're not going to get it. If it is not the hand of Almighty God, man cannot do it. I see a situation happening today in the world that you and I are living in, similar to what was happening in Jeremiah time there was a transition taking place then there is one taking place right now there is a movement in the atmosphere there's a shifting in the world military power there is a shifting in the world economic power there are some similarities between judah's time then and what we are seeing now and a lot of god's people are afraid a lot of god's people are wondering 
what on earth is happening so they gone to the stock broker and say look here i want you to put my house in order make sure that everything is in place because it look like some things going crash and i want to make sure so when the crash come my money safe some folks start take cash out bank and buy up real estate because all kind of things are happening but guess what is happening the people who are supposed to know God they are doing everything else except drawing nearer to the God of their salvation them putting them house in order financially they're putting their house in order economically they're doing everything but their soul is empty and bare and dry and before we fix it and set up ourselves before the living God we are going to Tom Dick and Harry we are going to bank and we're going to financial institutions and we're doing everything else but let me tell you just like in the days with the prophet jeremiah god had to ask the question then is there no bomb in gilead the question is being asked today of the saints of the living god who were running everywhere else except into the presence of almighty god is there no bomb in gilead when the question was asked then there was none because the balm that they had there that grew on the tree could only assist their physical ailment but they had a soul problem and the balm from gilead could not help them but today you and i also have a soul problem and the same question is being asked is there no balm in Gilead? But I stand here this morning to tell you that there is a balm in Gilead. I stand here to tell you the answer to the next question. Is no physician there? I stand here this morning to tell you that there is a physician in the house. Don't be like the majority of the children of Judah. They heard the word. They got used to Jeremiah. And they took the word and they moved on. What happened to Jeremiah? Something wrong with him. All him talk and preach and prophesy about his gloom and doom. But it was the word of God. I would love for this host to understand that every time when you see the preacher comes. And every time when you see the teacher comes. You, let, let's take the word. Because there is something about brushing aside the word. It makes you become cold and callous. And after a while, you're going to want to run back to the very word. And it is going to be far from you. When judgment came to, Je to Judah. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent his armies over. They couldn't utter a word. They couldn't even say, God help. The time came. All the words came back to them. But it was too late. All of us need to understand saints of the most high God. There is something about the word. If we don't like it and know that it is the word of God, we better still accept it. There are some preachers that love to talk pretty things and tell people that no matter what you do, everything is all right. Well, that is a lie. That's not how the word put it. The word put it in a way that you got to serve the Lord and you got to serve the Lord with gladness. The Bible puts it in a way that we must live for God and we must live separated holy lives the bible puts it in a way that if we don't have god as our focus we are in serious trouble but you have some folks will tell you that even if you live in sin you don't need to worry because if one day 40 years ago you said jesus come into my heart he's going to be in your heart even if you die in the prostitute house but that is a lie from the pit of hell you are going to have to live for god and we're not we're not talking and preaching about perfection we are preaching about holiness for none of us will be perfect this side of life but when the word comes receive it when the word comes from this book accept it don't brush it aside there goes pastor again with another one of those words to frighten us but if it frighten you so be it and what used to happen now is that the folks turned their faces against jeremiah and jeremiah at one point became afraid to even preach 
and to prophesy because he just knew what the people were going to say but i want this house to be a house that loves the word and if when the word reaches us it disturbs our heart situation it disturb our living situation let it disturb it and adjust ourselves to the word of god we will not go the way of judah we will not go and cause judgment to come upon our lives but we will walk with god and understand that there is a bomb in gilead i don't care what is happening in your life right now you can overcome i don't care what is happening let me tell you something I got a text from us an individual that was a saint she she put it that way i don't know the person didn't get her name she didn't give the name she just said i know her so i can speak because i don't know who it is she said yes sir i used to be in church but i got pregnant and i left and I became pregnant again and I stayed out. I know I have two children, but guess what? I know something is happening in my heart and I want to serve God again. Can I really serve God again? And my answer to her was, yes, you can. Give your heart to him and make up in your mind that you're going to serve him. But I'm living a certain way and I'm saying, listen to me. It doesn't matter what is happening. Everything can be fixed. So when the individual outlined the situation, the individual was admitting that I am not well. I am just far from God. And I don't know if God is able to deal with this thing because i used to walk with him and i don't know how this thing happened to me but i'm happy this morning to tell somebody that there is a bomb in gilead i'm happy this morning to tell somebody that there is a physician in the house and i wasn't talking about those of feeling pain i'm going deeper than that if your soul is lean if your soul is capsized if you feel that you can't make it and you're tired of sin and you were once in the house can i tell you there is a bomb in this place right now and if you come to the great physician the sympathizing jesus he will take that situation and he will turn it around and he will fix it up and he will fix you up there is a physician in the house oh can we praise the lord somebody there is a physician in the house i don't care where you fell off the boat get back up right now because when this balm is rubbed over that wound in your soul there is going to be a peace there is going to have you ever had muscle spasm and they take a thing they call icy art it is something like that the balm is you know it's a little ointment that when they put it on the muscle it's like it cold sometimes and it just get hot and then after a while the pain gone when they take the balm the balm of jesus operates like that you know the soul is tired the soul is thirsty the soul has backslid the soul has gone away but i hear the mighty god say listen to me i am married to the backsliders come over here and then he starts to touch you with the healing balm and he rubs it at the side of your soul where the ache is and all of a sudden there is a calm and there is a peace and there starts to spring forth from that aching soul joy gladness happiness peace hallelujah hallelujah there is a bomb in the house this morning uh, somebody somebody you're online and you're watching and you're going through turmoil in your life they tell you that because you backslide and you left the presence of God you're like a dog going back to your vomit and you're therefore not gonna do that you can't take the embarrassment don't listen to nobody Jesus the mighty God say he will marry to the backslider I keep telling folks you know what is important is the word 
don't make nobody tell you that God is not interested in you. Again, he is. And the great physician is in the house right now. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from. I don't know the condition of your soul. But I feel at the dawn of 2022 to tell somebody the palm hallelujah is in the house and you can bow your knees and let him anoint you with the soothing healing balm that comes from his presence and his presence alone He will save you. If you're a man that left the house for a lady and you're living with her and you're out of wedlock, you're living in sin. And if God should come now, you're not going to make it because you're living in sin that you know is wrong and that the Bible declare is wrong. Don't let anybody tell you that it is all right, it is wrong. That is the word. But the bomb can fix it. And God can take that man and that woman and get them together in marriage. And they live a, a life that is pleasing to him to the extent that if he comes now, you can be saved. I don't care what you did, where you went, how you feel right now. The bomb is in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. Somebody lift your hands and glorify the balm, the great physician. The healer is in the house right now. The healer, healer is here. And I close. Because if there is any doubts in anybody's mind, you think God is hard because he knows and he's mocking them in the midst of their calamities not mock because he don't care he's doing it out of frustration because he's reaching out and we are not responding to him do not take the word of god lightly do not treat God and his word with scant regard and disrespect. Don't do it. And I want as we start 2022 for this church, I reiterate, to take seriously the words of God. If it tells us don't go there, don't go. If it tells us it is fine, it is fine. If we don't like a brother or a sister, get over there and let them know after you've prayed, my brother, I love you. Don't fool yourselves and believe that you can don't like somebody in church and you're rapture ready. That's a lie from hell. You are not. You are not. And there are a lot of folks and I'm closing now. A lot of folks are going to be frightened at that morning when the trumpet sound and they are still here a lot of folks i heard one man say what a thing if him go to where him go him see some people and guess who him call some gunman and so so put me i'll go somewhere and see those people you know what he was saying it is possible to end up in hell whole heap of people that go to church because the things that they were supposed to do and the things that they were supposed to avoid the simple things which is in the word they thought it was too simple you know salvation is simple salvation not hard and God only wants us to live right and put him first and love our neighbors as ourselves. If you know the simple things. And some folks would rather to go to hell. And, in, and, and live with Satan. 
than to for the brief time that they are here live good with them brother and them sister but God is judge don't take the word lightly don't stiffen our necks like the people of Judah in the time of Jeremiah let us when we hear the word we accept it embrace it and live it make a challenge for 2022 that I am going to live the word and I am going to love the word and if the soul is lean there is a balm in the house for you God bless you as we hold on to the word and as we live for God in Jesus name God bless you praise God Until there's just no more to give, I'm going to love, love the yes. Jesus, Lord God, you know the heart and the soul of every man. You know the need of your people. 
Lord God Almighty, those who are present here in the sanctuary, those who are online, and those who will be hearing this word later. Jesus, Lord God, as you have led us beside the still water, Lord God, you have now restored our soul. Jesus, we want to give you thanks. We want to pray your continual guidance, Lord Jesus, God, and wisdom and protection to be upon your servant. Encamp it round about each and every one of us, Lord God Almighty. Help us to keep your word within our heart, Lord God Almighty, that we will be able to apply to our lives. That we will not become weary, Lord Jesus, God, and faint in heart. But God, that our faith will maintain in you, knowing that you are the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that. Jesus, Lord God, go with us, those who are going. And Lord God, we pray that you will tabernacle, Lord Jesus, God, and remain with your saints. Lord God Almighty, as we receive your word right now, Lord Jesus, God, we pray your continuum of power to be upon us. Bless every heart. Lord God Almighty, speak again to your servant who will be coming. Lord God Almighty, we know you have a sure word. You are not short. And so we want to give you thanks. Bless every saints. Bless those who have not yet saved. Hasten them, Lord God, that they will accept you, Lord Jesus God, and come to live for you. Let your will be done continually. Bless the singers, Lord Jesus, God, as they stay to continue to minister. Anoint them, Lord God, that they will minister unto you to get the glory. Jesus, let your will be done as we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Thank you, great God. Praise God. Praise God. I will never you can make way for the others to come. God bless you. Going to live. Going to live.